evening guys uh, a very very exciting day today again where i was rereading a book which is one of my favorites and which i have read multiple times maybe sometimes in whole sometimes in part today i was reading a very important chapter from this book called the talent code by daniel coy and uh, the essence of the book is greatness isn't born it's grown so what daniel the, the case that daniel has through across the book is the whole book is made up of this premise that none of us are born talented talent is something that we practice it's made up of you know you can grow it within you so daniel calls something like talent hotbed which means by what is it that really takes someone to be talented how do you really get talented a very very interesting read for someone who really wants to understand how to be good at something you know it's not so many times you know many of us feel that uh, it's all talent is you know natural iske andar ye hai isliye acha kar raha hai it's it's never that way so daniel has a very interesting take on it so today guys i was reading a chapter on practice how does practice help someone to be talented and that's i mean that's one of my favorite chapters because it, it all involves practice and it's like you know daniel begins by talking about you know sometimes when you see when you see talent in someone when you see ki okay, talent kahin se achanak hi aa gaya it just appears out of nowhere maybe your neighbor suddenly you see him playing in a band a school band and you're like wow i never knew that he or she is so talented or maybe he he appears on a tv show where he dances fantastically and then you think about it that kahan se aaya hai talent and the first feeling what he says is initial feeling when you see someone showing the talent is you sabse pehle to disbelief hota hai that uh, you don't believe that the person is so talented second that moves into admiration and then maybe somewhere even envy crops in and notice guys these three, these three feelings that i'm talking about they are not in the same order maybe envy pehle aayega ya then disbelief and then admiration or whatever order but you do go through these three emotions whenever you see a talent i mean someone showing good talent so it's it's a feeling you know and you need to understand where does that talent come from it's so easy you know he and he's given three wonderful steps i want to be sharing these steps um in this video with you there the first step that he talks about is you know three rules of practice he calls these three rules of practice the first rule is to really chunk it up break it into pieces it's like you know when he calls deep practice is all about constructing and insulating the circuit circuits matlab the the practice routine that we have it's all about redoing the practice routine by breaking it into smaller parts but actually you know when you actually do that repeat the circuit how does it feel like so there's a very beautiful example that he shares in the book he talks about it's like it feels like exploring just imagine you're exploring a dark and an unfamiliar room what happens when you break into a dark and unfamiliar room first of all you know what you do is you start slowly you'll maybe in the beginning you'll bump into some furniture because you don't know that place you'll stop you think about it and you start over again maybe initially the whole exploration would be a little painful for you but then what ha- what will happen is you try to explore the whole room over and over again you you'll try to build your errors there'll be of course lots of errors you'll extend your hand to reach out a bit further into the room to feel and each time you do that what you're doing is you're building a mental map until you until you are able to do it quickly and intuitively that's it so th- this is all about breaking it into chunk what you really did was you broke it into chunk did a little bit stop thought over it did a little bit more so agar aapko yaad hai no when we were young we heard this phrase from our parents you know and this was what we did a billion times like over and over again from our parents from our teachers from whoever was mentoring and coaching us they used to say take one step at a time and it was this it was this when they said just take one step at a time maybe the real meaning of this this paradigm is when we understand it right now so guys this is important that's the first step break it into chunks the second rule of deep practice is repetition the value of repetition can never be undermined again we have heard it a million times from people so because there is research that shows that there is no substitute for attentive repetition means you repeat the whole thing attentively because nothing ever you do your talking your thinking your reading it could be your imagining nothing ever is more effective in building your skills than executing the action you know actual action karne se zyada kuch nahi not even reading not even imagining nothing which means you're firing that whole impulse that whole circuit down your nervous system again and again 
that repetition has the effect on you remembering the overall circuit. You know, it, it, the more you remember it, the more errors you're fixing into the process, the more you're practicing it again and again. So, and, and you know, when someone, uh, someone just asks a few athletes, what is a short, short way to make your skill evaporate? If you have a skill, hai, how do you make it evaporate? And the answer is the sure short way is to not practice it consistently for 30 days in a row. That guys is the power of repetition because everything in your body is in constant cycle of breakdown and repair. It breaks down, it repairs, it breaks down, it repairs. We put a cycle here. That's the reason your daily practice of your action of your act or whatever talent that you're after your daily practice, it's daily practice really matters a lot, you know, particularly as we grow older in age. Maybe you're a teenager, you would require less circuits of repetition. But as you grow older, maybe in your 40s, you would require more. So it's all about that. So guys, let's let's get it straight. Repetition is invaluable. Repetition is irreplaceable. That's important. The third rule of practice, and I love this one, is you need to learn how do errors feel. Imagine, you know, the key... The, the key in this point is to get to a balance point where you can sense the errors in practice wherever they're coming. How do you sense that coming? That's important. That feeling is important, which means that's a connection between your heart and your brain. That feeling is important, which means to avoid the mistakes. First, you need to feel them immediately. Suppose you're playing a musical instrument. For instance, you're playing a keyboard, right? I'm taking this example because my son plays keyboard a lot. Suppose you're playing a keyboard and you hear a tone which is completely out of sync. When you do that, it should bother you. It should you, you can make out there's an error happening. So it should bother you immediately. It should bother you a lot. That's the sense that you should get. That's what you need to feel because when you're really practicing deep into the zone, when you're fully immersed into the zone, you're doing it with full concentration. And that's why any error and it springs out. That's a feeling you're beginning to learn. You need to begin to learn that feeling so that you can practice that feeling of identifying the error over and over again. That's important, guys. And one of the best example when Daniel ends that chapter, he gives one of the best example of deep practice. The three steps that we spoke about of deep practice, how, which is that one example that ingrains all the points and explains the whole concept of deep practice beautifully. And that example he says is those of babies who are trying to walk in their initial years. So how does that work? So a few years ago, you know, researchers did this research on to see what made babies improve at walking. How did they get better at walking? And this is what they discovered. They found out that an important factor in how better they did was not their age, not their height, not their brain development, Nothing mattered, which is innate, which is inbuilt in the babies. It, it no, nothing mattered. Any inbuilt trait did not matter at all. But it was the finding was, which is rather surprising, is that the amount of time that they spent repeating the walking circuit over and over and over again, which means the amount of time that they actually spent trying to walk. That was a major determining factor of how good they got at the art of walking and how soon they mastered the art of walking. Isn't it surprising, guys, that this is, this is a beautiful finding. So this example, guys, of babies, staggering babies trying to walk is the best example of how deep practice would feel like. So the feeling, in short, of being, being like a staggering baby, of maybe intently, clumsily, walking towards, lurching towards the goal and then uh, maybe in the process toppling over again and again and again. That's it. Because it is it is this wobbly, discomforting feeling that you get that any sensible person upon getting that feeling, any sensible person would instinctively seek to avoid. Because it's very discomforting, right? Nobody likes to fall over and over again. Nevertheless, babies do that. Yet, the longer the babies remain in that that state the more willing they get to endure that whole pain and the more they'll permit themselves to fail that's the whole that's what the whole practice circuit is about so this example of staggering babies embeds the deepest truth about practice that Daniel describes that's it's about which is to get good at something you have to be willing or maybe you can say you can even be enthusiastic about being bad at something have you ever heard someone tell you, oh God, when you do something, someone will tell you, crazy, you suck at it. If, if you hear someone telling you that, be happy about it. 
because it's good only when you suck at something you'll get a chance to improve i i recorded my first podcast yesterday and freak holy shit i sucked at it big time i felt so because i've been listening to podcasts i listen to a podcast daily from maybe a year or so it's one podcast a day i do make it a point to listen to and i know the beautiful podcasts that people come out with and when i did my own lo and behold the whole thing i was like i can i be so bad at something but only when i'm bad at something can i improve at something right it 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 goes this way as well it, into everything so that's what it is so guys understand that when you take the baby steps that's the royal road to building the skill that you've always wanted to build and that's an important part so get going guys get going the three rules of practice chunking it up repeating it and learning to experience what practice feels like are three most important rules get get set into those rules get going and see how the deep practice works for you in building your skill